Hi there, it's Dr. Mary Barbera here for a live um, session. I decided to go live every day in March. So this is day five of 30 in preparation for the uh, release of my brand new book called Turn Autism Around, an action guide for parents of young children with early signs of autism. I, if you are here, I see one person, Olena, Olena, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that name right. Um, I'm going to do one more thing and um, then we're going to get started. So let me just be very careful when I play around with my computer so that I don't turn us all off all at the same time. Um, it's always risky. Okay, so I am live. I am Dr. Mary Barbera, and I am the author of the brand new book called Turn Autism Around, an action guide for parents of young children with early signs of autism. And this book is available for pre-order right now. It's going to come out at the end of the month. And so in preparation for the book, I am going live every day in March. And this is day five of 30, at least. <laughs> to go live. So I was, for those of you that have watched uh, yesterday, and um, I said we were going to talk about planning and goal selection, but we are going to talk about something else. Um, so if you're here, if you can leave me a comment, let me know uh, where you're listening. Um, we are going to be discussing a brand new article that I just uh, got today, received today from a friend. It is in the New York Times, published on March 1st, and it is called Diagnosing Autism in the Pandemic, and it is by an MD, a physician by the name of Dr. Perry Class, and um, I, uh, like I said, I received the article from a friend, and I posted it immediately on my business page, on my personal page, because it is uh, really an important article. Um, he starts off by saying that in pediatrics, we talk about the importance of early identification, um, early detection of autism, early treatment. Um, and early means really paying really close attention to a child from one to three years of age. And one of the things he points out that during the pandemic of 2020 and 2021, so we are, you know, 14, 15 months into the pandemic and, um, some young children like two year olds and 18 month olds and three year olds have spent half of their life, give or take, in isolation, away from social play uh, opportunities, um, with only the eyes of their parents and very close relatives in some cases. Um, a lot of times, well visits, doctor visits are canceled or they're very uh, brief or they're done remotely. Um, sometimes the kids and the doctors and everybody have to wear masks and shields, making, you know, it a very unusual situation. Dr. Catherine Lord is quoted in the article. She's a well-known well uh, researcher in the field of autism. She's at UCLA. Um, and she points out that um, she actually is bringing some young children to her backyard because she needs to not have them wear masks so that she can see their facial expressions and that sort of thing. Um, and that's something, I mean, I have thought of this. In fact, while I was writing my book um, and the information about pre-ordering, joining our launch team at turnautismaround.com, when I was writing my book, I had a a uh, former client's mom uh, contact me and she was worried about her second son who was turning three years of age in June. And um, she contacted me in June, the week of that he was turning three. And she said that um, we're going to call him Drew because uh, he's in the book in chapter nine. 
um, as Drew and his brother, uh, his name, his name is not Sam, but we called him Sam in the, in the book. And Sam is featured in the safety chapter. So Drew, um, I had only met Drew once or twice as a baby, but, um, his, his older brother, uh, was 10 when Drew was born around 10. Um, and Drew has moderate severe autism. He has problem behaviors. He had eating problems when he was young, sleeping problems, you know, just a lot. He's, he's pretty impaired and involved. And so the older brother was home with the isolation and the quarantine. And also Drew was home from daycare. Um, because he was going to daycare for socialization. And this is March, April, May. Um, and he was about to go back to, to daycare when his mom called me and was worried. She said she thought he was on track, but all of a sudden he, you know, seemed to have more tantrums. He wasn't potty training easily. He, um, seemed to be fixated on certain things and she was worried that maybe she needed to start an autism evaluation for drew so i went to evaluate drew and um in my book i talk about that but really what happened i think is i don't think drew is on the spectrum i don't think he'll get a diagnosis but what happened with drew is that he was basically um at home, no good modeling from his older brother, who also needed care. Uh, his parents were, his dad was working remotely from home. Um, they had a caretaker for the older child, a therapist, caretaker type of person for some of the day. You know, this is a long day, 24-7, to be taking care of kids with moderate severe autism when they're used to going to school for six, seven hours a day. But what was happening with little Drew was he was on the iPad a lot. If he have a problem on the iPad, he'd go up to the caretaker or to his dad and um, probably get the iPad working again. And that's just not good for any child let alone someone who's a sibling who's at high risk of autism. So to make a long story short, um, I talk in my book how he had pretty complex language unless he was throwing a tantrum. So he, I was testing him with the STAT, the screening tool for autism and toddlers. And one of those is like doing this spinny thing that went up to the ceiling and I would do that. And he'd be like, make it go to the roof and things like that. So that was like putting sentences together. But when he would flip out when he did because he wanted my yellow car so bad, he wouldn't say, I want the yellow car. He would be crying saying, car, car, yellow car, you know. And um, so his language reduced as he was having problem behaviors. So this article in New York Times is, is really um, highlights the importance of parents at home, not knowing what to do, not knowing the early signs of autism, which is in chapter two of my book, which we covered the other, the other day on one of my Facebook lives. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, I'm a parent of a young adult with autism. I'm also a board certified behavior analyst, best-selling author, um, online course creator. And I am really on a mission to get the information in my new book, Turn Autism Around, out to the world. Um, it really does align very nicely with this article in the New York Times saying, like, we can't afford to have our kids in isolation. Um, we can't we can't afford to. The waiting lists were already horrendous, and now we're having additional problems getting kids evaluated, getting treatment, getting real treatment, not just remote treatment with a little tips and tricks. This is 24-7. You know, we need to know what to do. We need to know what to do to increase language, decrease problem behaviors, get kids eating better, sleeping better, potty training, going to the doctor's dentist haircuts, wearing a mask, wearing a face shield, getting COVID testing, whatever um, the new kind of thing we have to do to get our kids um, out and about and um, 
get our kids engaged in meaningful activities. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. I was really excited to see this article though. And and it is at marybarbera.com forward slash Facebook. You can go there. You can look at the New York Times article that I posted today, March 5th. You can also go back and look at um, day one of my Facebook lives, two, three, four, and this one. And uh, turn your notifications on at Facebook and YouTube and catch me live. Um, I am going to cover certain topics. I'll answer a few questions if they're related and um, really just want to get the word out to have people pre-order my book at turnautismaround.com, join the Facebook um, group, get to read the first two chapters right now, tonight, get some videos with me and Dr. Temple Grandin who wrote the foreword for, for my book. Um, uh, um, I don't understand this question. Aisha, who's a top fan said, do you think excessive, oh, excessive watching of TV will affect a child's developmental language? Yes, I do. Um, especially if a child has high risk of autism and wants to watch the same things over and over again. Um, it can become uh, very um, rigid and rote and can definitely affect things. Um, I did a podcast. It was a solo show, but it covered the work of Dr. Ami Klin, who I talk about in my book quite a bit. And that is at marybarbera.com forward slash 93. And he talks about how kids with autism focus on the wrong thing. So he, in his lecture, which I have linked at marybarbera.com forward slash 94, in the show notes, I have an actual two and a half hour lecture you can watch with Dr. Omni Klin. But he shows this video of two toddlers in a plastic wagon, and they're fighting over opening and closing the door. And typically developing toddlers will watch that and they'll have eye gaze tracking, you know, um, research and typically developing kids will actually watch the toddler's eyes and their face and they'll glance down at the door and it's kind of like they're watching the whole kind of quote unquote fight, if you will. Um, between the toddlers about opening and closing the door where a child at very high risk of autism that later gets diagnosed with autism will be watching the door open and close. And that clip is less than five minutes. And he said, just in that five minutes, if they are hyper-focused on the door, um, it can really affect, uh, you know, that that's missing, I forget what he said, 500 or 5,000 social opportunities. And if you expand that to all day long, um, yeah, I, I'm not about like abrupt, take all electronics out of the home, um, because it's just impossible to keep kids engaged for as many hours of a day that they need to, especially in the COVID times. But I, especially hearing and seeing Dr. Klin's, um, work, I'm just super convinced that we have to keep our kids engaged as much as possible, um, throughout their waking hours, which is a hundred hours a week. And if we don't have them going to daycare or preschool or regular school, um, for those, uh, especially for the little guys. So yes, I think it does affect things even for typically developing kids like Drew, like, um, one of the recommendations I did make to Drew's family is to take Drew to a speech and language pathologist who could do, um, standardized testing to see if he was behind because once they get to talking and sentences and everything, I, um, am not really, you know, I, I would rather get standardized testing done to make sure they're not so delayed. Belisha said she pre-ordered the book. Thank you. I loved your online courses. Excellent. Oh, Lily Daisy's here, even though I'm a little earlier than I was the last couple nights. Excellent. Lily's in our online courses and she's in our book launch and she's been here five days in a row. So excellent. Excellent to see you. Um, Aisha said, unfortunately, my son, he started to watch TV when he was one year of age. I mean, Lucas, my son was very addicted to TV. So, um, you know, don't feel guilty. And like I said, it's a lot of hours in the day. 
Um, and it, it, you need to slowly replace um, what your son is doing. And in my online courses, I'm not sure, Aisha, if you're in my online courses, but I show you proven strategies, easy strategies to learn how to engage your child as much as possible, both at a little table during teaching time, 15-minute sessions, and then throughout the day, everywhere you go. Um, yeah. Uh, my son watches his tablet more than he should. I think every child and, you know, is on electronics and now it's like therapy's on the computer and everything's on the computer. Visiting your grandparents are on the computer. Um, and so we just really need to make the most of our time with our kids as much as possible. And if you're working, if you're working remotely, if you can advocate to have therapists come into your home to actually keep your kids engaged, if you can, if you have the financial resources to get a babysitter, a mommy's helper, a relative who can really roll up their sleeves. We have so many grandmoms in our online courses and on our book launch team. Um, Asia said, I really want to remove the TV from the home. And some kids do. Um, so Safia said, please tell me, is your new book covering and explaining excess assessment? Um, is excessive watching TV false sign of autism? I don't think uh, watching TV is a sign of autism. Um, and I did cover that last night. I covered assessment. So go ahead and go back to marybarbera.com forward slash Facebook. Scroll up to day four. I also covered the early signs of autism, which one of them is not excessive watching of TV. Um, Lily says she loves learning from me. And Aisha says she'll join the online course soon. Um, yeah. So if you join my book launch team, um, you'll get an invite to go to a free workshop where you can find out more about my online courses too. Um, but I really did give a lot of information about what to do, how to detect early signs, how to assess, how to plan all in this book, which is just about ready to come out. Um, I was on a news show on Monday. I was, I, uh, recorded a podcast, uh, interview. Um, so, you know, every day I'm just out there promoting the book and this New York times article is just excellent in terms of really showing the need. So Dr. Um, what did I say? Dr. Perry class. And at the end of the article, um, he actually gives some, uh, some signs of autism, some red flags, um, and which I'm going to just read briefly, but I, in my book and everywhere, I usually just say, look at the CDC milestones because your child may be a different age of these kind of, uh, criteria. But so in this article, Dr. Class says a baby babbles by six months and then babbling increases in complexity. So if you have a baby who's not babbling, that may be a problem. At nine months, a baby responds to his or her name. I do have a video blog on a teaching response to the name, and I also have that in my book. Um, by 18 months, a child, by one, by one year, 15 to 18 months, a child can say some words and follow simple directions like, touching body parts, which I covered a few days ago in my Facebook live by 18 months, a child should begin to put two words together by two and a half to three. A child can usually speak in simple sentences, um, with fluency and inflection. So a question sounds like a question by four months, babies make eye contact and social and respond with social smiles by one year. They point to show you interest definitely by 18 months or two, if you're not talking and not pointing, that is a huge problem. Um, and waving. And I did say in the Facebook live the other day, when we talked about pointing and waving is, um, 
kids can also lose skills. So my son was pointing and waving before 15 months, and then he had a, a slight regression. So that's another confusing part of this whole thing. And from two, they uh, respond to other children and can interact in games with some back and forth. So in my book, though, I say it doesn't matter if this turns out to be autism or if it's ADHD or if it turns out to be a learning disorder or if it turns out to be just a speech delay, typical development. You could have a preemie. You could have a child with some other um, other genetic cause. You could have a child with Down syndrome. You could have um, any, any child, even a typically developing child that you want to learn how to increase talking, decrease tantrums, get them better with feeding, sleep, potty training. Um, it's all in my new book. So turnautismaround.com. Um, how much does a book cost? Well, it varies depending on if you, where you live, if you get it on Amazon, if you have free shipping, all that stuff. But the book is out actually in hardback. Um, this is actually a paper book, but it's not going to be in paperback. This is just a sample galley, they call it, which is a draft. So it'll be in hardback, um, for about 22, $26 range, um, it's in Kindle. Um, you can pre-order it for about $12 and um, it'll be on Audible too. I read the whole book back in January, so it's going to come out with me reading it. Um, so it's a lot of information. It, it will blow your mind for that money to have all of these strategies. I didn't hold anything back. It will be um, a real game changer. So I'm super excited about that. Okay, so how do I order the book? TurnAutismAround.com for all the details. You can watch a little two-minute trailer. You get a list of all the bonuses you receive if you pre-order. We are going to stop the launch team soon. So if you want to be on the launch team, I would love to have you. We have over 500 like-minded parents and professionals, lots of grandmoms in there as well. So join us today. Get into it. Start reading the book. Start changing your life. And I hope to see you tomorrow for another Facebook Live. So have a good one. Bye.